copying leads to new ideas. If ideas aren't coming to me, then I just move on to the next section and finish the other one later. Hey everyone, and welcome to Flux, the best place to learn web design, freelance, and web flow. Now today we're continuing on with part two of this super exciting series that we're doing, where we're walking you through our entire web design process from start to finish to create our actual Black Friday sale landing page, the one that we'll be using this month. Now in part one, Rand walked you through how he came up with a wireframe and content for the page. For part two, I'm gonna show you guys how I turn Rand's wireframe into a final design, a high fidelity prototype that is ready to be built and turned into a live functioning website. Let's get into it. Okay, so to go from low fidelity, which is the wireframe, to high fidelity, which is the final design, the very first thing I'm gonna do is familiarize myself with the wireframe that Rand created. I do this to get a feel for the layout and the copy because these will both provide me with a lot of context and help me determine the visual style that would be most appropriate. Okay, to give some context, so with this Black Friday webpage, we wanted to stray away from our current design style just a little bit, perhaps with the background color and the layout a little bit. But at the same time, this webpage is part of an already existing website, so there needs to be some sort of consistency. And so you'll notice that I go back and forth between the wireframe and our live website to get a feel for what some of the sections in the wireframe uh, will sort of look like once fully designed. Okay, so now that I'm familiar with the layouts and the messaging that we're going for, I can start looking for some general inspiration for the webpage. It's Black Friday, so we wanted to go for something with a black background, black 3D. I think it'll look really slick and sinister. So I drag all of this general inspiration above the frame that I'll be working on. And so I'm not looking for inspiration to help me create any section in particular yet. I'm just trying to figure out what this web page will look and feel like as a whole, which is essentially art direction. And you'll see that as I bring in this inspiration, ideas begin to come to me, in which case I leave little notes for myself so that I don't forget. And now that I have a general idea of where I'm headed with this visually, I can start looking for some section specific layout inspiration. For this, I love using btw.so because it's for that exact purpose. You get inspiration by type of section. So whether that be a testimonial section or a feature section. And so I'll start with the hero section and I'll pick maybe one or up to a handful of screenshots and I'll lay them out right beside where I'll be designing that section. And you'll notice again, every now and then I get an idea for how I could emulate and alter that inspiration and I leave a quick note for myself. And now that I have all of this inspiration in place, it's time to narrow things down a bit. And so what I'm going to do is circle some of the things that I like from the general inspiration that I found. Okay, now the fun and admittedly hard part begins actually designing. And so my process here is very simple. First thing I'll do is quickly set up my grid and bring in our navigation and footer because those remain unchanged. And I know that the second thing I can do is to try to copy the basics of the visual style that I decided on based on the general inspiration that I found earlier. So I can change the background color, I can change the color of the typography. I also have an idea of what the 3D will look like. These are easy wins to get the ball rolling and build some momentum. Then I go section by section, starting at the hero, and I copy the layout of the inspiration that I found for that section in particular. And as I do this, new ideas come to me, which is why having inspiration on hand is so important. Copying leads to new ideas. If ideas aren't coming to me, then I just move on to the next section and finish the other one later. And so you'll notice that what ended up happening was that I went ahead and set up the basic layout for each section. There was only a couple there that I nearly fi finished fully because I knew right away what I wanted them to look like. When I'm done setting up all or most sections, I just track back and work on developing each section properly. So here I'm back in the hero section and I know that I wanna have some 3D elements circling the headline 
And these 3D elements will be things that remind you of web design and Webflow. So I'm creating a 3D version of the Webflow logo. I'm creating the pen tool, a 3D cursor, a laptop, and some basic shapes as well. And I'm doing this with Vectory and Adobe Dimension. And before I do too much more, I send this over to Rand to see if he's on board and to get his feedback. At this point, Ran left me some comments in Figma and all I'm really doing is reviewing that feedback and fixing whatever needs to be fixed. There really wasn't much, just some comments on the 3D as well as the images for the courses. And that's it. That's what we did to go from wireframe to high fidelity prototype. And I would say that the key takeaway here is having a clear process for not only finding inspiration, but also using that inspiration as you're designing. Feel free, of course, to use the one that I've shared with you today. Anyways, I hope that was helpful and keep your eyes peeled for part three, where we'll be sharing our exact process for turning today's design into a live functioning website using Webflow.